Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's webinar, Increase Your Chances of Passing the CI Exam. My name is Kelly Quinn. I am the Director of Business Development for the IIA's CI Learning System, and I'll also be your host for today's session. Today, we are honored to have two wonderful presenters who will share with you their industry knowledge and expertise to assist you with your CIA certification journey. First to present will be Sherry Lee. Sherry is the Manager of Global Certifications at the IA, and Sherry will be followed by Vicki McIntyre. Vicki is a CI Learning System Instructor, a past chair of the IA's Chapter Relations Committee of North America, and is currently the President of First Plus Resolutions Incorporated. Okay, so let's get started by going over today's agenda, and I am now going to turn it over to Sherry Lee. We are going to um, cover also the benefits. You can gain instant credibility with the internal and external clients. You have more opportunities for advancement. Many of our certified individuals have informed us that they were promoted shortly after or selected to lead an audit engagement. You'll broaden your knowledge, grow your confidence, distinguish yourself from your peers, and uh, the big one is increase your earning potential as well as promotability. Now, the benefits to the employers are just as important because they, as a certified individual, they'll have a trust in your capabilities that you can deliver an improved performance, and you'll have the proficiency that you can demonstrate to improve assurance as well and enhance the credibility with the executive management team. The process itself uh, seems a little long, but it really isn't. When you apply, you're going to set up a profile in our certification candidate management system. Everything that you do related to the application and registration will all be done through CCMS. Once you apply into the program, and are accepted, you will then receive an email advising you that you can register for your desired exam part. Please keep in mind that you have four years to complete the program from the date of application approval. Once you register for an exam part, you have 180 days to schedule and sit for that exam part. Your exam scheduling is all managed through our test administrator vendor, Pearson View, and anything related to cancellations or rescheduling is always managed through Pearson View. The eligibility requirements are pretty simple. We do require a bachelor's degree, however, there is an exception to that. Um, those who do not have a degree can trade off experience. And um, if you have an associate's degree, you need five years' experience. If you have no degree, you need seven years' verified experience. There is an experience uh, exception form and booklet. Of course, everything is located on the IIA's web pages under certification, so keep that in mind. You'll also obtain and complete a character reference form, which must be signed by another individual who holds an IIA certification or your immediate supervisor. We also require a professional work experience form. And again, if you don't have all of the experience required, um, you can still enter into the program. You just will not receive your cert final certification until you have sat satisfied your work experience requirements. The final step is to pass all three parts of the exam. We have a lot of exciting things coming up on the exam, but before we get into that, we have a polling question. We'd like to know when you are planning to take, the CIA, take a CIA exam part. So we have the majority of, of um, participants on the call taking the exam before December 31st, and uh, looks like the balance after January 1. This is important for our audience. A quick overview, it's a three-part exam. 
It's offered year-round through computer-based testing. We have um, over 800 testing centers now in 150 countries. Um, part 1, 125 multiple choice questions, which candidates have two hours and 30 minutes to complete. Parts 2 and 3 have 100 multiple choice questions, and candidates have two hours to complete the exam. Exams are scored on a scaled scoring basis. You need a 600 or more required to pass. Sometimes they ask, what is scaled scoring? Well, the difficulty of the questions are weighted, and that's what sort of totals um, the cumulative points. There's additional explanation on the IIA webpage. Now, this is important because those who plan to take the any CIA exam part prior to the end of this year, continue studying according to the current syllabi. We broke down the parts that exist. You will note part one has three domain topics, part two has three domain topics, and part three has eight domain topics. So the question arises, what are the changes that are coming? Effective January 1, 2019, the new CIA syllabi exams will be launched in English only. So if you are planning to take any exam part in English after January 1, 2019, you should study according to the new syllabi. The exams will be available in additional languages throughout 2019. And again, we have a schedule on our certification web pages if you're so inclined to visit those. You'll see the differences, the main differences between the old exams and the new one. It's really quite exciting. We've, we're receiving a lot of questions. Is it more difficult? Well, that's up to you to decide. Internally, I believe that it is not easier, but it is better aligned and focused. As an example, part one has increased from three domain topics to six domain topics, but part one features a greater alignment with the IIA's attribute standards, with the largest portion of the exam, 35%, focusing on governance, risk management, and control. Part two is also increasing from three domain topics to four domain topics. And again, this part will focus on performing the engagement, which accounts for 40% of the exam. And part three is the most exciting because that has been reduced from eight domain topics to four domain topics. And it has um, been refocused to the core areas that are most critical for internal auditors, such as data analytics, the um, expansion to include cybersecurity risks and emergence, emerging technology practice. The largest domain in part three is business acumen, which makes up 35% of the exam. So again, depending on when you plan to take an exam part, you should study according to the old syllabus or the new syllabus. Um, all current rules apply for the exams, and you will retain any exam parts that are already passed prior to the release of the new exams. And keep in mind, you can take the exam parts in any order desired. As an example, you might say to yourself, well, I'd rather take the existing part one because it only has three domain topics and I've already prepared for that. Great. Um, take part one this year, and you can take part three next year. You retain all past parts. Again, after January 1st, the 2018 uh, and prior exams will no longer be offered. We have another question for our participants. We'd like to know if you have already applied for the CIA certification program. Very good. Uh, about 45% said yes, 54% uh, said no, and the other uh, less than 1% are unsure at this time. If uh, you have not already applied into the program, it's a good idea to start gathering your doc documents 
and get prepared for that portion of the process. When you arrive at the test center, what you see here uh, right now is what your exam will look like at Pearson View. So each item will, will come up and you have uh, multiple choice questions. You will select via a radio button which answer you believe is most correct. In the upper right hand corner of, of the exam, you'll always have a clock that tells you how much time is remaining in the exam, and you'll also see what uh, question you're on, the first one of, of nine or the first one of, uh, or the third one of 120, etc. But you'll always be able to check your pace. Now, after you've successfully completed parts one, two, and three, you will be awarded 80 hours of continual professional education. And so you will not be required to report CPEs for almost two years. Anyone who goes into a non-practicing status only has to report 20 hours. Each year, you must simply go into your profile in CCMS and simply assign an attestation that you did complete your uh, continuing professional education hours. You do not have to submit any forms. You do not have to submit any proof. However, the IIA does conduct an audit of CPE reporting on an annual basis. So it is highly recommended that you retain all of your documents for a minimum of three years in the event you are part of a future audit. The information uh, all of that which we have covered today can also be found in our certification candidate handbook, again, which resides on our IIA web pages. I encourage you to take a look at that. We also have links to the new syllabi and FAQs as well. I'll turn it over to Vicki for exam preparation. Well, thank you, Sherry, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for participating in this webinar. I'm really excited about opportunities for CIA candidates, um, you know, both uh, wrapping up before the end of 2018 and our new syllabus in 2019. So having taught this course to thousands of CIA candidates around the globe, um, I come with uh, a lot of uh, feedback from previous students and expertise in the classroom to help you with your exam preparation. So why would you use this IIA CIA learning system? Well, it is an IIA product, first and foremost. The new version 6 curriculum has been updated to the new syllabus, and that product is now available for you. The version 5 that we are currently using through the end of 2018 aligns perfectly with the existing exam syllabus through December 31st of 2018. If you have a current license for any part of the version 5 CIA learning system, you have an opportunity to upgrade to version 6. Um, currently, I, I would encourage you to wait until around January 1st but uh, you do have that upgrade option available. So if you have a license that extends beyond January 1st, you have that upgrade opportunity. And there's no charge for that upgrade. It's a very simple process to go online, click on a link, you fill out a simple application. There's a validation of the timing of your license expiration, and then you simply download the new materials. So you get your soft copy downloaded to your your laptop or iPad, whatever technology you use, and carry on with your study. The learning system teaches the entire global CIA exam syllabus. And it's always interesting to me, um, I teach public sector auditors at the local level. I taught a class yesterday. Um, I had county government folks and I had state government folks in the state of California. Uh, I also teach this course through Management Concepts in Washington, D.C., and there we typically have all federal government auditors, and that course is conducted over a full week of live classroom uh, learning. So 
My point is that oftentimes I have people in my class who are not even pursuing their CIA certification, but rather they want to learn the body of knowledge. They want to understand our standards, our code of ethics, our 10 core principles, and they want to learn that foundation of internal audit practice through going through those performance standards. And I love the new exam syllabus because parts one and parts two are exactly aligned with the attribute standards for part one and then our performance standards for part two. So the point I'm trying to make is that many times I have people in my classes who want to learn our professional standards, the foundation of knowledge and the, the, the body of um, guidance that is required for proficiency in internal audit practice. So that's, uh, that's another takeaway. Um, the learning system is designed for real learning, for learning the concepts, learning the practical application of the standards so that you can apply the information and the guidance to your day-to-day -day internal audit work. So it's not oriented around memorization and just getting the X in the right block, A, B, C, or D, for your success on your exam. That's a natural outcome of your study. But again, the curriculum is developed by um, um, curriculum development experts, and so it's oriented around the learning experience. The learning options in the CIA learning system will fit anybody's learning style and any schedule. We have the online study tools that are available immediately on demand so you can log on anytime and work the practice questions through the quizzes. Um, there's a lot of tools and resources available to you such as flashcards so that, to help you um, memorize particular terminology. And of course, this product meets the IIA standard of excellence that we experience with all IIA products. So what's new in version 6? Well, we said there is direct alignment with the 2019 CIA exam syllabi. Uh, there are 500 new practice questions and quiz questions in your online tools and resources. We have the International Professional Practices Framework video tutorials better software, so faster performance. And again, this is a fully mobile, so it's, it's transportable, fully mobile learning system with online reading materials. And of course, you can download the soft copies of the materials. Uh, when you purchase the system for a small additional fee, you can also obtain the printed books. Uh, with the printed books, of course, there's a small shipping cost, uh, packaging and shipping cost, um, but that is available to you as well. So version 6 is new and improved from version 5. In terms of preparing for your CIA exams, it's important that you kind of analyze and invest your time and your money where you're going to get the most, uh, you know, the most benefit for your investment. So think about if you do very well in a self-study mode. If you are very disciplined and you can calendar your study time just like you were doing a self-directed college course, you know, independent study type course, a self-study option might be, you know, the best option for you. So purchase the materials. There's very good guidance. There's a very good mapping of um, preparation strategy. So you certainly can do self-study if you are disciplined to accomplish your goals. Uh, there are also instructor-led courses in the live classroom. The IIA hosts the live classroom courses at the IIA headquarters in Lake Mary, Florida. And I was teaching in Minneapolis last week, and I actually heard that those courses are selling out. So if you would like an opportunity, especially for you guys, you know, in the heartland of America, maybe in the middle of winter, you'd like to take a trip to Florida and visit IIA headquarters. It's very close to Orlando, so it's an easy flight in. 
Um, but those courses are becoming more and more popular. Live classroom environment at the IA's headquarters in Lake Mary, Florida. We also have instructor-led courses with different delivery channels. So for example, I teach a virtual CIA class through Rice University out of Houston, Texas. I also teach one out of UCLA in Southern California. So those are virtual delivery channels. The IIA also has virtual courses, you know, which are instructor-led courses. So that's another option for you. Um, corporate courses, the IIA has a staff of qualified CIA instructors. And if you can partner with other audit shops in your area to bring a qualified CIA instructor into your area, that might be a really good approach as well. Maybe you don't need to partner. Maybe you have a large audit shop and you're continually, you know, having new hires coming in and rotating out into your business unit. So this might be a good opportunity to maybe establish a CIA course for your own audit shop, maybe host it every other year. So we also have corporate opportunities for learning and um, tackling the entire curriculum for CIA certification. So identify your best learning option. So here we have another polling question. We're curious to know, how do you prefer to study? There we have it. 59% of you prefer self-study. 22% prefer an in-person instructor-led course. 18% prefer online, and then 2% other. So this is interesting information. Okay, let's continue. Prepare to pass your exams. So what are the steps to success? Plan your studies, like anything else we do in life. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. So plan your studies. Then study the reading materials. So you want to approach this just like you would a university course. You'll want to be reading the materials, making notes in the margins, then application of the concepts. So this gives you opportunities to download from the Resource Center in LearnCIA.com. You'll have um, flashcards and other learning tools. You'll have your um, videos. You'll have all kinds of opportunities to apply the concepts that you've learned. Then practice for your exam. There are lots of quizzes. They are oriented by topic aligned within the chapters within the syllabus of each exam. You'll have an opportunity to take a final exam that is similar to what you experience in the Pearson View Exam Center. So that final exam will have the time clock ticking away in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. You'll have the opportunity to flag questions that you're unsure of. You'll have the opportunity to check your time management. And this is a critical, critical element of exam preparation, is making sure that you can eliminate the time constraint you know, as, a, as an anxiety issue. Um, and you can do that by you know, taking some strategic advice and um, um, practicing time management while you are doing your quizzes. So practicing for your exam, again, you'll have that uh, opportunity to do the Pearson View Emulation final exam in LearnCIA.com. So we often get the question, how much time do I need to study? Here you see in the current version of the exam syllabus, for part one, we estimate about 40 hours. Part two, about 40 hours. Part three, currently about 80 hours. For the upcoming revised syllabus, parts one and part two will remain about the same. And part three will decrease to about 50 hours. Now, having said that, please recognize that for the part three exam specifically, we are shifting from about 20 to 25 percent emphasis on IT and IT security. So out of your, your current part three exam, you'll see 20 to 25 questions around IT. In the new exam syllabus beginning January 1st, 
about 45% of the questions will be on IT and IT security concepts. So if you are you know, very used to technology, if you're younger, I think there's a direct correlation with generational differences here. If you're younger, you're used to technology, you do some IT, uh, general controls testing, application control testing as part of your routine internal audit work, you're going to be very well equipped and well experienced to tackle the new IT, you know, content in the exam. Maybe for some of us who are in banking or healthcare or oil and gas or maybe some of the highly regulated industries where our audits are more oriented around compliance work and operations audits and maybe we don't get into this arena of IT so much. Maybe you know, maybe the current exam syllabus might be better for you to get this done before the end of this calendar year. Um, so your study time is going to vary based on your work experience, based on how recently you finished your college work. And the reason for that is that if you're recently right out of school or within the last three to five years or so, then you're going to be very used to studying. You're going to be used to taking exams. And so, you know, usually doesn't, you don't have to have the, the, the learning curve of kind of, um, um, you know, refreshing those test-taking skills and so forth. Um, your expertise in accounting is another consideration for the Part 3 exam. The, uh, the focus on the financial management topics has not changed much from the current exam syllabus to the 2019 exam syllabus. So there is about 20 to 25 percent of your questions on the financial management topics. Also, your study time will vary based on your study method. So if you are attending a class doing the coursework, you will, um, you know, obviously you'll have the time investment and traveling to the class and sitting in the class and then the study time besides. If you are doing entirely self-study or the online approach, you know, your study time will probably be a little bit less. So another consideration is how quickly you read and understand the topics. Again, your base of work experience, that foundation of work experience, particularly if you work in a relatively mature internal audit shop that follows IIA methodology around how we do internal audit work. If you are accustomed to performing a risk assessment and developing an annual risk-based plan of audit work that you're going to do, that's a very good thing. If you're used to engagement level planning where you're considering fraud risk, you're considering the IT risk, you're considering, um, you know, operational risk and you're, you're taking a more integrated approach to how you do your work. Um, so planning the work, doing the field work and testing, reporting on the work, and then monitoring for management's remediation. If you're following that methodology, then you're going to already have a solid base of experience that's very relatable to the standards and the guidance and the exam questions that you're going to experience on your CIA exam. So, you know, that's another um, critical su success element, I think, is, um, is your, your work experience in a mature audit shop. Um, also, I think it helps to have had work experience in a variety of industries, so that if you have had your work siloed, like in my experience, I was a financial services person and worked in uh, banking, and um, I was a bank examiner for a while. I was a VP of finance of a bank. I was a VP of risk management of a bank. So uh, my industry expertise was siloed, was very narrow. The CIA exam requires a very broad application of the standards and the, the concepts. So when you're taking the exam, you've got to think, broadly, think across all industries. So that's another consideration. So create your study plan. We have in the CIA learning system, and you'll find these tools online at learncia.com, 
there is a smart study tool where you can kind of establish your baseline to evaluate your strengths and weaknesses, completing an online pretest, and then using that results of that pretest to create your comprehensive step-by-step -step study plan. So this is a really great tool for you to plan your studies and um, you know have the most effective use of your time. So step two, once you have planned, then you would of course study the reading materials. So by either downloading to your um, electronic device or if you prefer to use the hard copy books, that's fine too. Um, so you would want to read the materials and study just like you would in any other college course in preparation for a final exam. Step three is application of the concept. So here we have an example of a quiz question. So you would be working through the quiz questions. Again, they are aligned to the topics in the syllabus and contained within chapters with the broader topics for the domains of each exam. And a unique feature of the learning system is that when you get an answer to a question correct, you will see the green highlight that tells you that that answer that you chose was in fact correct. If you uh, answer the question incorrectly, then you're going to get a, um, an advisory that you have the incorrect answer and also a reference, a reference directly back to the content and where you will find that topic in the CIA learning system so that you can circle back and refresh you know, your study of that topic again. So that's, uh, that's a good advantage of the CIA learning system. Application of the concepts through the flashcards and the glossary. So the flashcards are downloadable from the CIA learning system, from learncia.com. And we highly recommend, I, you know, aside from the study tips and, you know, developing this very disciplined approach to how you're preparing, calendaring your study time and some of these other um, tips that I'm going to share with you in a bit. The flashcards I have heard back from students are absolutely essential and very helpful to your success on the exam. So downloading the flashcards, actually printing them and using an old school you know, piece of paper with a uh, terminology on one side and a definition and supporting um, points on the other side of the flashcard is another great study tool for application of the concepts. Step four then is practicing for your exams. So we've already gone through the quizzes with the practical application. But here we have the um, Pearson View exam emulation. So again, this is a great feature of the CIA learning system that you have the time clock ticking away in the upper right hand corner. You see the opportunity to flag the question to circle back later if you're unsure of it. We recommend as you are working through your exam to answer every question. Do not leave any question unanswered. And also avoid analysis paralysis. Don't sit and ponder a question. You know, manage your time as you're working through the questions. Pick an answer and move on, even if you don't have any idea of the correct answer. If you choose an answer, you have a 25% chance of getting it correct. There are four answer, answer options. So pick an answer and move on. If you don't answer a question, you will have, um, you will have an opportunity to circle back and answer that question at the end of your exam, time permitting. But the point is, don't leave any question unanswered. You'll want to answer every question. Flag it if you're unsure. And then you'll have a screen pop up at the end of your exam that identifies all of those questions that you've flagged. And if you have managed your time well, then you will have time to circle back and revisit those questions. So practice for your exam, the Study Plus feature in the CIA Learning System gives you some bonus printable practice questions and also kind of a guideline 
the knowing when you're prepared for your exam. We also have information regarding the scaled scoring and the CIA exam scoring uh, strategy. We have an analysis grid, a question analysis grid, so that you understand the topical emphasis within your exam. That helps you to better plan your study time. And we have study tips from successful CIA candidates. Also, another feature we mentioned previously is the 2019 upgrade guarantee. So for those of you, um, I think we had about 58% of you were planning to take your CIA exams in 2018. And I think for those of you studying for parts one and two, at this point, we've got about three months remaining in 2018. So wrapping up your parts one and two this year, very good idea. Um, the important issue here is to be realistic about your study time. So once your application is approved and you go online and you choose your Pearson View exam site and you find a date and time when you would like to sit for your exam, be realistic about your study time that's going to be required between now and your exam date. So I would say, you know, having 90 days remaining in the year, if you have not yet started studying, I highly recommend that you tackle parts one and two and defer part three into 2019. So having said that, when you purchase version five today, then of course that gives you exactly what you need and exact syllabus alignment with the current exam for all parts, one, two, and three, but targeting parts one and two and then when you get towards the end of the year or very early next year and you're prepared to ta tackle part three, at that point then maybe upgrade to version six, okay? Because that's where you're gonna have the direct alignment with the new syllabus and the, uh, you know, the look and feel of the new updated curriculum. So upgrade guarantee from 2018 to 2019 and there you have the web Reference learncia.com forward slash upgrade gives you the information regarding how to accomplish your upgrade. So really, you can get the best of both worlds in today's environment. If we were having this conversation two months ago, um, you know, we would have only had the version five materials available for you. Um, having said that, please understand that if you've already invested in version five and have a current license, you still can upgrade to version six. Just be aware of the timing of your upgrade so that you are aligning you know, with the, the proper syllabus that you're gonna be testing under. So study tips and test taking techniques. Choose the right study method for your learning style. That's very important, very important. For those of you that uh, said that you prefer to study on your own, that's a great thing, but be realistic. If you require, you know, if you work better in a learning environment where you're interacting with other students, where you can benefit from hearing other students' questions and uh, instructor answers, as well as the participation of other students in class and their experience and their internal audit environment, um, you know, recognize that that may be a benefit. Set your exam date. So the key here is to get your CIA application into CCMS, the Certification Candidate Management System. Once you've got your application approved, which is very quick, the IIA has a very rapid turnaround time for that. I would say within 24 to 48 hours, applications are approved, provided you have all the appropriate documentation submitted. Once you've done that, the next step is to set your study plan, being realistic about your life, your personal obligations, how much time can you really dedicate to studying. And as soon as you have a forecast of how many hours per week you're planning to study, choose an exam date, go online, Pearson View site, and commit to the exam. It's very important to have 
a date certain. The number one reason that people do not earn their CIA certification is because they procrastinate. And I think all of us, having gone through university, we know that if we didn't have a final exam for our classes, right? I mean, you could continue studying and studying and studying forever and maybe never feel prepared, or you lose interest and your study just kind of drops off and you never take that final exam and never finish the course. Don't let that person be you. Set your exam date, be realistic, don't procrastinate. So having your good study plan, you should calendar your study time and show up for your classes. Show up, honor your appointments with yourself based on your plan. Know your strengths and weaknesses. So, you know, study those areas where you have the weaknesses. Study those areas where you don't have work experience. I've had people in class come back and tell me that they, they love to study the stuff that they like. Well, you know, that's nice, but you really need to study the areas that you don't like and the areas where your quiz show, uh, scores are showing weaknesses. Write your flashcards. So download the, the flashcards from the Resource Center, but then augment the flashcards, supplement the flashcards with other new knowledge that you've learned in your study. That gives you multiple touch points with the content. So if you're reading and learning new content in your book, literally write that information, maybe in the form of bullet points or just, you know, just memory joggers on your flash card. That gives you another touch point with the material. You've read it, you've studied it, and now you're transferring those concepts by physically writing it down on the flash card. So prepare your own flash card. Proficiency areas. So this is an issue that we haven't talked about yet. Your exam questions are oriented around a basic understanding or a proficiency level understanding. The basic level of understanding is recall of definitions and terminology, um, you know, having a general understanding of the concepts. The proficiency level questions, on the other hand, require you to, for example, take an internal audit challenge, take three or four pieces of information that's provided to you in the exam question, analyze those three or four pieces of information, synthesize it and draw a conclusion, and exercise judgment in terms of determining the best answer to the question. So a proficiency level question looks very different than a basic level question. What we're saying here is that you need to put extra effort into the proficiency level topics. And within the IIA's CIA learning system, all of the topics are identified as either tested at basic level or tested at proficiency level. So that's, that's another very good um, um, you know, opportunity for you in terms of how you're going to invest your time in studying. Again, understand the application of the concepts and the standards and internal audit methodology. Go beyond memorization. And then finally, be prepared for the testing center. Be prepared for the experience of arriving at the test center Know that you have to have appropriate identification that matches the name that you provided to the IIA when you signed on to the CCMS and had your application approved. You need to know that you should arrive early, uh, you know, understanding that you will not be allowed to take anything into the exam experience with you. No calculator, no pencils, no pens, uh, no watches. Um, so, you know, you'll be given a locker to put all of your personal items in, such as your wallet or your purse or car keys and that type of thing. But being prepared for the testing center helps to eliminate a lot of anxiety if you know what's coming. Also, the test format, recognizing that this is a very secure exam experience. There's going to be many other people taking exams while you're taking your exam. 
but those people might be taking their LSAT for entrance into law school or the MCAT or their GMAT for grad school. So at the Pearson View Exam Center, many other exams are being administered, so there will be many other people in the room. They generally will give you noise-canceling headphones that you can wear so that you can, you know, overcome any distractions that might be in the room from other people, you know, clicking their fingernails on the, on the table or whatever. So being prepared for the test center and the test format is essential to your success on your exam. Study tips. Understand the International Professional Practices Framework. For your Part 1 and Part 2 exams, this is absolutely critical. And the broad scope of the IPPS. So understand that it's not just the standards. You need to understand all the principles of the Code of Ethics. You need to understand our 10 core principles. The mission of internal audit, the definition of internal audit. And all of these pieces of mandatory guidance are closely related, um, but still, it's essential that you understand all of them and what they are and the different pieces of mandatory guidance aside from the standards. Another study tip, write an audit manual. That would be a, a pretty uh, time-consuming undertaking. But even just write a table of contents of an audit manual using IAA standards as your foundation or your baseline for doing that. Solidify the concepts by thinking of real life examples. So what do you experience in your day to day work? Let's suppose you have a new job and you're now working for a publicly traded U.S. company. Your chief audit executive reports to an audit committee of your board of directors. And you have a large audit department with varying staff levels. So you have internal audit staff, internal audit seniors, internal audit managers, internal audit directors. Understand the roles and responsibilities. There's a lot of exam questions on roles and responsibilities. Who's responsible for what? Uh, three lines of defense. Be sure you're familiar with the three lines of defense guidance. Understanding what is operating management responsible for versus what is second line of defense activities responsible for, such as enterprise risk management or a compliance function or maybe a loss prevention function or a fraud unit or maybe a um, environmental health and safety unit might be a second line of defense function. And then, of course, internal audit is third line of defense, but understanding roles and responsibilities of the three lines of defense is essential, as well as roles and responsibilities within the audit activity and the organization structure of a large audit function. You do have an advantage if you have experience in a manufacturing environment, accounts payable, so the procurement to pay cycle, uh, inventory, accounts receivables, so the sales and accounts and receivable and collection cycle. So understanding the accounting cycles and the risk and control elements associated with those cycles uh, will give you an advantage. So study tips. Test taking tips. Read the last sentence or the sentence with the question mark before you read all the details. So go straight to the question and understand what you are being asked before you read all the background information. That information may be superfluous. Part of it may be irrelevant. So understand the question that you're expected to ask, answer, before you read all the other stuff. Look for the qualifiers like except for or not likely or least likely or all. Look for those qualifiers. Anticipate your answer before you read your answer options. Again, I made the point already. Think broadly and globally. Think outside of your industry. Think outside of your work experience. Recognize that our CIA certification is a globally portable professional certification that is the gold standard for internal auditors. Therefore, Internal audit activities vary based on culture, based on regulatory environment, based on government structures, 
around the world. So think broadly, think globally, think in you know the broadest generalities outside of perhaps a narrow scope of your professional experience. Eliminate the obvious distractors. Eliminate the wrong answers. So when you're analyzing your exam questions, there may be two answers that appear to be correct. Your job is to choose the best answer. So eliminate those answers that are obviously wrong and then make your choice between the two that are more likely to be correct. Trust your first impression. Avoid that analysis paralysis. Avoid overanalyzing your questions. If you're unsure about a question, flag it. Circle back later. Budget your time. Don't rush. So budget your time. This is very important. We recommend that while you're practicing your quiz questions, you literally keep your phone on stopwatch uh, mode and uh, or a clock and practice time management around one minute per question. And doing this will be, you know, it will serve you very well during your exam. I just yesterday had heard from a lady. I got an email. She took her part one exam and she scored 580. So you need 600 to pass. She was 20 points away from success and she said, I ran out of time. I had 12 questions remaining when I looked up at the clock and I had like 23 seconds. Don't let that be you. You've got to practice your time management. Again, part one, 125 questions, two hours and 30 minutes. If you finish 125 questions in 125 minutes, you'll have a 25-minute buffer of time to circle back to any of those that you've flagged that you were unsure of. So discipline yourself around your time management. Be well rested, be comfortable for your exam, make sure you've eaten a good meal. I mean, these are common sense, but sometimes people don't, uh, you know, don't do the obvious. So Kelly, let's turn it over to you and uh, you can tell our audience how they can purchase a learning system. Okay, thank you so much, Vicki, for all the helpful study tips and also to Sherry for the important information she shared with us about the CI exam and the new changes for next year. So I know we're almost at the end of time, but I wanted to share a couple important details with you. Uh, if For attending today, we are going to be able to offer you a special 25% discount that will be off both full kits and individual parts, and this will apply to both version 5 and version 6 for the new exam. So if you have exams to take this year and you want to purchase the current version 5, or if, you want to, um, if you're waiting until next year and you need to purchase version 6, this discount code will apply to both. You can order at learnci.com, and this that offer is valid until October 15th, and you'll need to enter the code CIA918 at checkout, and the discount will be applied. We also do have additional discounts if you're an IA member, so make sure to enter your IA member number. And then we've included here the new pricing for the new version 6. Um, if you have a friend or a colleague that also wants to combine a purchase with you, there are additional volume discounts available. So please reach out to my colleague, Mike Downs. His email is mike.downs at theia.org. Um, he can help give you the pricing for the discounts. Okay. A couple important resources. Uh, DI's certification website is where you can find that handbook, how you can register for the exam, learn more about how and why the exam is changing, and learnci.com is where you can order the discounted price there and obtain some free practice questions and a demo. And that's where you'll find a list of all the instructor-led courses, both live and online, that are offered around the world. So thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it, and I hope you have a great day.